Hey folks, we are going to be doing a safe zones and disaster zones video here. Where are the best and worst places to be in the upcoming earth catastrophe cycle? Now, I am not going to do the entire world, not going to happen, but you're going to be able to apply the things you see me doing here for the United States, Europe, and Australia to wherever it is in the world that you live. So. First things first, if you have not watched those two videos that are listed down there below the title, they are linked below the video. They are going to answer 99% of the questions that you have and many of the ones that you didn't know that you have. Before you watch this video, you really need to have done the homework. Watch those two videos. They are 19 minute videos. It is not going to take you very long. And if you actually care enough to have a question and ask a question about this, care enough to do the homework. So. We're going to start at the United States, well, North America, really. And this is a very much exaggerated elevation map, so you can see things better. Obviously, the Rocky Mountains are not that big by comparison, but this is so you can easily pick out what's what, what's where. Now, as I've mentioned before, and I'll mention again here, the main things you want to think about are what is the temperature now and afterwards in the new shift what are the flood risks the tsunami zones when the earth turns over and how many other people are you going to have to deal with so starting in the united states this is why it's better in the west um, when you take a look at this map here where the brighter the color is the more of uh, population there is you can see that um, with the exception of the pretty substantial uh, cities in the West, this is where you have a chance to not get into a bloodbath in the aftermath uh, of the disaster and in the lead up to that. Because don't forget, as Earth's magnetic field weakens, there's a greater and greater chance that the sun is gonna take out power to the world before the actual magnetic pole flip solar micronova and the world turning over. So. You could be looking at a decade, no power, no supplies, shiz hits the fan scenario before the really bad stuff happens. And so population density is probably your, your most important uh, and, and critical thing to understand there. Uh, after that, uh, let's go ahead and draw a little blue line on here. And here we're gonna be talking about the before. Um, there's really not too many places that you can't survive without uh, electricity in the summertime. Uh, okay, for those who have uh, certain health conditions, maybe parts of Arizona uh, and parts of Texas, parts of New Mexico, it would be a real struggle in the summertime without AC. But in North America, really the, the big thing is cold in the wintertime. If it wasn't for our industrialized society, if it wasn't for electricity it, or the ability to ship coal or uh, kerosene or other lighter fluid around, a vast majority of this place would be very, very challenging to live in or it would be um, something e even worse than that. And so the, the reason why we have a little hitch there in the Rockies is because that elevation obviously makes it colder. Um, there are parts, for example, right there where that little hitch is at, at the highest part of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. There are parts of Eastern Colorado that don't get nearly as cold as parts of Western Colorado at the exact same latitude, mostly because there's several thousand feet of elevation change there. And so it doesn't mean if you live north of this line, oh, you're screwed even in the before times. What it means is if you live above or north of this blue line, what you need to be thinking about is, okay, if we lose electricity, if basically shiz has hit the fan, the sun throws out a major CME, we lose power, and we have 10 years to go before the earth flips after which it's fine. You know, the United States and Canada are both going to be in pretty good places um, after that. In fact, the new equator is going to run through parts of Canada. But before that, you need to be asking yourself, can I survive 10 years 
of winter with no electricity, not an industrialized society. And you really need to be asking that question most north of that blue line. During the disaster, and this is when, you know, the vast majority of the survivors of that first little part, even if we get 10 years of uh, no power and no industrialized society before the zenith of the disaster, during the disaster is, of course, when uh, an enormous portion is going to fall. And here, this is where the elevation matters most. Don't forget, this round, the waters around North America are going to be moving northward. And so you've got the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic absolutely ready to batter the eastern part of the country here. Um, it's, it's going to be really, really rough. Um, last time when the waves came the other way, the Rocky Mountains could not contain the Pacific. They broke through and there are sediments that, are, that washed into the Gulf of Mexico. I don't have much faith in um, the Appalachians this time being able to, to do anything differently, especially when you consider the fact that that they are also an enormous population zone. If we pull this back up, you can see that um, really doesn't help to be in Appalachia when, when this thing goes down. There's just too many people in this area. And again, as I said, I, I don't think it's going, to, it's going to make it with the tsunamis. The tsunamis are pretty bad. Um, you can see here, a lot of people talk about the Ozarks, which is that mound right there around Missouri. As you can see, it is nowhere near as tall as the Appalachians, certainly not as big as the Rockies, which are over on the left side of this image. And so no, the Ozarks are not going to be able to handle the tsunami that, that comes forth from the Gulf of Mexico, especially since when that water from the Gulf of Mexico starts coming onto the land there, there will be very rapid isostatic readjustment, and that land is probably going to sink quite a bit. That The maps you may have seen where the center of the United States is basically basically an extension of the ocean. I think that's fairly accurate. Not to mention the fact that the New Madrid Fault is going to go and rock that area to bits. And if, you hap if we happen to get enough of a warning where you can bug out somewhere, you have any idea how many people are going to the Ozarks? Too many. That area would light up almost white on this map if that happened. And so from a flood perspective, from an earthquake perspective, and from a population density perspective, the Ozarks are, are not, not my favorite. We're going to draw another little line on this map here. This would be uh, the New Valley of the Sun. If you wanted to get technical about it, you could maybe extend the blue line a little bit further north and a little bit further south. But in general, this is where you want to be. Uh, you want to be high enough on the eastern range there that the waters are going to miss you, especially from the Gulf of Mexico. You don't necessarily want to be at the highest elevations because they're, they have a pretty good chance of being too cold. And in the after, these are going to be at roughly the same latitude that they are now just in the southern hemisphere, and we don't expect the weather to be too terrible. Again, for the northern part of this blue line here of the New Valley of the Sun, your main concern is can you handle the weather in wintertime for 10 years with no electricity? If that answer is yes, this is the New Valley of the Sun, and this is by far the best place to be in the Americas. Let's go next and do Europe. This is a population density map of Europe, and I've picked one here that actually shows uh, you know, a good bit of Russia as well, and parts of North Africa, and even parts of the Middle East, so you can see just how densely populated Europe is. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, some of the things you're going to notice, the former Viking territories are not as uh, populated. Of course, the problem there is that they get very cold. Um, we also have this elevation map here, and you can see that a lot of Europe and uh, the surrounding areas are just not that elevated. They are going to be at a major flood risk either during the initial inertial uh, tsunami or the sloshback waves. So then we put these two things together here, and you can see that um, what you would really want if you're in Europe is a place that, one, is not going to be too cold in that 10 years or so 
of potential winters that you'll have to deal with with no electricity that is not ultra low elevation and is not high population density and so the question then becomes okay well where are those regions okay well there's one in spain there the the eastern part of the country there where there's far less people and there's also elevation and it's far south enough it's not going to be as cold the other one would be in the northern uh, part of eastern europe where there is that mountain range and so let's go ahead and take this map again and i'll draw these in yellow here those yellow things you've seen drawn on there if i had to pick and don't forget we have reason to believe that the solar micronova is going to pound this area pretty hard but that notwithstanding if i had to pick areas in europe it would either be in eastern europe where those yellow lines in the mountain ranges are and it would be on the non-mediterranean side of the uh, east-west line there or in those mountains there in spain that we've identified and circled uh, with that yellow circle there and again that would be because they are not too far north they have a very good chance of s surviving the tsunamis and the population density is low. Now, I have to admit, I don't know much about the Alps. Uh, I sort of picture them being brutal to survive in winter, simply because, you know, they're high elevation. And for those who don't know what the Alps are, hopefully you know what Italy looks like on here. And the Alps would be that east-west range that is to the north of them. Um, I'm thinking it gets pretty cold and pretty snowy there in the winter. And also, the scariest volcano, for those who have been watching a while, that's Campi Flegri. I think the fallout in the Alps is going to be pretty brutal there. So um, the Alps is a maybe, but in terms of those three things I mentioned, the temperature in the before time and the temperature in the after time, for that matter, um, the tsunamis and the population density, those yellow areas right there are where I'd want to be. Uh, we'll quickly do this one more time here for Australia. This is the population density map. The, you know, the, the blue to light blue are the areas where most people are, which of course would be around the, the coastlines there. This is the elevation map. And you can see that, okay, we, we've got some fairly good elevation in various parts of the country. Um, but a lot of those areas on the you know, on the eastern part of Australia, those are going to be, I, I, I would say that those are going to be the places where anybody who does survive or get a heads up, they're going to be going towards. And so you, you do have somewhat of an, of a population problem there. Um, if I had to pick areas, uh, I would have to say that those you know, the mountains of the West are, are probably going to be better. They will probably survive the tsunamis. Um, you, you might have to worry about some brutal heat and some wildfires. Um, and then we have the, those uh, mountains over there on the west, uh, I'm sorry, on the eastern side as well. Uh, those areas circled in green would be the areas that I would be picking. Um, why have I not done Asia and South America? Um, the reason I haven't really done Asia and South America here is because uh, those have some serious problems. That's where the new poles are going to be. Um, India going to be super cold. South America going to be super cold. There are areas in the currently southern portion of South America that could be survivable. Um, there are areas in China and western, uh, I'm sorry, eastern Russia and certainly Mongolia that are going to be habitable. But again, I didn't want to take the time to do the entire world right here. Um, and also Africa is a different story because you have a fourth major concern in addition to the population density, the tsunami risk and the, the weather uh, concerns. You also have to be thinking about the absolute, um, absolutely devastating cultural scenario of, of where you might be and you know, it, it is unfortunate that many parts of Africa are the way that they are, but they are the way that they are. And uh, violence is not just something you'd have to worry about um, largely in the big cities in Africa. There's, uh, there's the violent risk everywhere. Um, and I, I don't necessarily mean every square mile, 
but even far away from the largest population centers, you know, roaming gangs are a thing, um, territorialism is a thing. So anyway, I hope that this was somewhat informative. Again, it's about what is the temperature going to be like right now? So right now, can you handle 10 winters with no electricity right now? Are you far enough away from a major population center? And are you not going to drown in the floods? Other than that, many questions up for debate. Many of them are pragmatic based on your personal situation. I hope this was informative. I will see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.